All right, a little update on our super micro scale projects. This is a super micro scale, which is a scaleless animal. So this is a ball python with no scales whatsoever. There's a couple of random scales here or there. It's also 100% heck clown. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. We're going into the snake room. We're looking at, I promise you, ball pythons today. I want to look at a couple of clutches that are really putting on some nice size. I want to look at a couple of things that I haven't shown you guys in a while. Maybe some things that you haven't seen at all. A lot of things are changing in the ball python room, and we're going to take a look today and see what those are. Hopefully, I'll get you excited about the upcoming breeding season and maybe want to get some ball pythons of your own and add to your collection. Stay tuned. All right, this is a really nice clutch that we had in uh, right at the end of 21. So it's really a 22. So it's, they're only about a year and a little bit old. This is a super blade clown that was bred by a hurricane banana head clown. And we got some really nice babies in this clutch. This one uh, is a female that I, I, someone is actually interested in purchasing, but uh, I really love her. She's a blade. So everything's blade, because the, the mother was super blade. Uh, it's a blade hurricane. You can see the little hurricane swirls here. Uh, head clown. And we know that hurricane and clown work really, really well together because hurricane is such a busy pattern. And this, this is a little unraveled because of the blade aspect to it, but uh, normally hurricane is really, really busy and dark. And you put that into clown, which kind of reduces pattern a little bit. And it really, I think it really enhances the clown look tremendously. Add banana to that and you, I mean, you can't go wrong because banana is just, banana clowns are awesome. Banana hurricane clowns are probably some of the nicest clowns that are out there. So really, really nice female. Once again, she's on Morph Market. I'm surprised she's, she's still hanging out here. She's about 400 grams already. And uh, like I said, I have a customer who's interested. Uh, we'll see if he picks him up, but, or picks her up, I should say. She's doing really good, great eater. Now, here's that same snake taken one step further. This is a blade visual hurricane clown. So you can see it's, it's definitely got a beautiful clown, but it's got a lot more busyness in it than a normal clown would have. And that's from that hurricane gene in there. Absolutely beautiful. Another female. Haven't decided if I'm gonna keep her yet. I, I might even have her for sale, but I mean, she's, once again, 400 grams. Definitely ready to go uh, in terms of probably for next, I mean, not this year, but next season for sure. Really, really nice. Hurricane clouds are just amazing, I think. You don't even need to put anything else in it. I mean, this is, <laughs> this has obviously got blade in it too because everything's blade, but the the busyness, the darkness that it adds to clown, because clown is nice kind of in and of itself, but sometimes if you start putting too many genes that reduce pattern, uh, clown loses some of its luster as far as I'm concerned. But when you add stuff that puts more back into it, like blackhead, that's why I like people love blackhead clowns, uh, leopard is really good, and hurricane, just the three, probably the three best morphs to add to a clown. All right, now here's a banana pastel blade head clown. Oh, and hurricane, sorry, hurricane. So this is banana hurricane pastel blade, but it's not a visual clown, it's a head clown. And, and you can see this is, this snake's over a year old and usually bananas lose all their like coolness at about a year old because they kind of fade a little bit. This snake has not lost anything. And that's because it's got that the hurricane in there, which adds more pattern and adds more, you know, you know, purples in here. You have blade, which obviously will reduce pattern a little bit, but uh, it's really the hurricane with the banana that works really well together. And then of course, the, this is head clown. So this got little boy, you're looking to get into the hurricane banana clown project. This is definitely a way to do it at a much lower price than having to get a visual male hurricane uh, banana clown, which is gonna cost you a lot more. So. This mail is available. You can reach out to me and uh, I'd be more than happy to, you know, put a pairing together for you if you're interested. And then I had to show you the, the stars of the clutch. I showed you this little boy the other day. 
this is the everything. We hit everything pretty much on this. So this is Banana Blade Hurricane Visual Clown. It could be pastel in here or not. I'm not really sure, but just beautiful. And this is, over, once again, over a year old, and he's still looking absolutely spectacular. Lots of purples, a lot of detail, very busy pattern from the hurricane. Uh, just got the beautiful oranges and, and, you know, colors that you see with banana. This is, I mean, he's, he's just perfect in every way. He's a keeper, obviously. He's going to be going into my breeding program, and we'll be breeding him possibly even this year, you know. Definitely at the end of the year, but, you know, we might do some mid-season type breedings. If we do, he's definitely going into the lineup. He's one of my, fa one of my favorites from 22, for sure. All right, I wanted to give you a little update on this girl. This is a black pastel, either candy or candino. Now she's turning a lot more purple as she's getting older. And, um, you know, I could definitely see the candino and candy influence here. I still think she's gonna, she's gonna wind up proving out to be candino. And that's fine. That's one copy of candy, one copy of albino. They, they kind of sit on the same allele and they add like an ax like super form. Black pastel candinos are just wacky looking. I mean, look at the contrast in 3D. It looks like someone took gold flake pens and just like markered right on top of this, this like lavender looking body. Really, really, she really turned out to be spectacular, this girl. I'm very, very happy with the way she looks. Once again, and she's getting, as she's aging, she's getting that, the, the lavenders are coming in more. She almost looks like a lavender albina, but that black pastel works tremendously. It's really, really got a good epistatic uh, interaction with, with candy for sure. Now contrast this with this little girl that I believe to be a leopard candy or candino. Now this looks totally different, this one. So black pastel obviously makes a big, big difference. This, uh, this snake more than likely I think is probably candy because it doesn't have any albino look to it. Whereas the other one I think is probably gonna prove out to be candino. This, this will probably be a leopard candy or something like that. Really nice. Um, a lot of different stuff going on, but you can see the red eyes which come from the candy and uh, just a really nice looking snake. So different than the other one, really, really different. And both are both spectacular on their own, right? For sure. I'm just gonna keep growing these females and see what they, you know, see what we got. Here's a really cool snake we produced. It was a one egg clutch from 22. Actually really at the end of 22. This is an Ultramel Orange Dream Krypton. So orange, one copy of Orange Dream, Ultramel, which is recessive. And then Krypton, which is the allelic combination of clown and cryptic. So one copy of cryptic gene, one copy of clown gene. And we got this, what we call Krypton. So if we breed this female down the road, you can see this big, that big ear stripe between behind her eyes. That shows you Krypton. She, she's kind of got some stuck shed in her, but you can see how white her belly is. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, she could potentially be super orange dream, believe it or not, but so I'm kind of saying possible, but she's definitely orange dream for sure. But look at how busy her pattern is. Uh, she really came out good. I love Ultramel, you know, uh, clown, Ultramel, cryptic stuff. That's like, uh, I'm really big. We're, we have a lot of stuff going on in that project. Uh, this is kind of cool because it takes it to the next level because we can kind of get this now we can create some clowns with this, with this Ultramel gene and with this Orange Dream gene. So we'll probably breed her to something visual clown for the next breeding. We'll produce clowns and Kryptons again, and we'll get that Ultramel into the clown project. So really nice. She's small though. She, like I said, she's only probably about six months old now. So uh, we got a lot of growing to do on this girl. I haven't shown you this little uh, baby in a while, this little girl. Probably one of my favorites, also from 2022. This is my purple panda pie. So this is super black pastel, banana, and she just bit me, pie. So super black pastel, pie is, is what we call panda pie. It's like got black and, and white. This one is purple and white because it's got the banana gene in it. So we call this a purple panda pie. 
beautiful little girl. I am not letting this girl go for nothing. She's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, just even if she's just like a display animal, I don't even care if I ever breed her. She's awesome. All right, a little update on our super micro scale projects. This is a super micro scale, which is a scaleless animal. So this is a ball python with no scales whatsoever. There's a couple of random scales here or there. It's also a hundred percent heck clown. Uh, I produced a bunch of these actually in uh, 2022. And if anyone's interested, uh, we do have some cool super micro scale head clown stuff. We have males, we have females. Um, obviously, I have them keep holding back some of the ones that I think are the best. And but there are some available. So if you want to, uh, you know, get into these scaleless or the my super micro scale projects, especially super micro scale clown project, this is a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, this this girl has put on some really nice size and. I'll tell you something, these scaleless animals really eat well. <laughs> they shed every week, but they really eat well. And as you can see, I keep them on wet paper towels, so damp paper towels so they can shed whenever they need to. If you don't do that, they're gonna have a lot of stuck sheds. You don't need to do anything else, just wet paper towels, they will shed every single week. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Maybe that's why they eat so much, because they grow more. I just think that what happens is, because they have no scales, um, maybe the scales, maybe their skin doesn't quite last as long, isn't protected as well. So their body sense, you know, okay, we need to reju rejuvenate the skin, like almost like a human does. You know, we're always dropping skin cells every single day and producing new skin. So uh, this is kind of like what these scaleless ball pythons do as well, because they just know that they need more. Um, they need to replace their skin more frequently than just shedding once a month or whenever they happen to shed. So, but they're, they're beautiful snakes and then they're, you know, I've sold a bunch of these, you know, just for people who wanted something that kind of is unique in their collection, not even to necessarily breed them, but I think they're awesome. I'm, I can't wait to finally produce a super micro scale clown. That's what been the goal. Haven't hit it yet, but uh, hopefully it's coming here. And since we're in this rack anyway, I might as well just uh, show off my almost blue rhino rat snake. <laughs> it takes a long time for them to turn blue. He's a 21, so probably by the end of this year, he'll be It'll be blue. You can see there's a lot of blue um, coming in here. All, all the green is starting to turn blue. Originally, he was they're born beige, and then they turn green, and then from green they start turning blue. If, if you have a blue line, obviously most rhino rat snakes are green, and they always stay green. But this uh, little boy is doing awesome. We're going to be setting him up probably once I'm fully healed in a display cage. I'm going to buy a bunch of display cages for some of my cooler snakes, and we're definitely going to set him up in a nice naturalistic enclosure. And once his uh, his girlfriend, which I just picked up this past season, she's still she's still beige. Once once she gets big enough that where I can put them together, we'll probably cohabitate them. This is one of my most uh, promising, I guess you could say, pairings for 2022-23 season. I uh, I really hope this girl goes. I produced her in 20, and so that makes her about almost three years old. This summer she'll be three. She's kind of right on the cusp of being able to breed. She's a super enchy, hypo, disco. In and of itself, that's freaking amazing. I mean, look how nice she looks. And she's 66% head rainbow. So I'm gonna try to prove her out as rainbow. I really, for some reason, just, you know, head rainbows have this like glistening appearance to them. They have a lot of times they have like these weird, you know, scales, random scales that kind of just shine. I think that, uh, I think she's gonna prove out. So hopefully we'll see. Let's, let's pray we get some eggs. All right, so we produced this, um, we had this caramel double hut moon glow, the caramel double hut moon glow carpet pipe on clutch earlier this year. It was a surprise clutch. It came really early. Most of the eggs were like not good. They were dried out. Only one egg hatched while I was in the hospital. And here it is. Um, I would probably say this is some sort of Caramel, it's very red. It's one of the reddest carpet python babies that I think I've ever produced, just right out of the egg, you know. And they change, because you know, they go through this oxygen, they color change at a year old. But this this one's got a lot of red. I don't know if the camera's picking it up quite as nicely as I like it, so I probably should take it outside. But this little, right here you go. You can see, look at all the red in there. Now, the, the, these carpet python babies are red, you know, when they're born, but this is like a darkish red. And I don't know, we'll have to see. I'll have to keep an eye on it. But I wouldn't be super, you know, it might prove out to be super caramel. I don't know, it doesn't look super caramel to me, but you know, once again, you gotta wait till these things go through their color change. 
So whenever you have a one egg clutch that survives, you got to kind of keep the baby <laughs> by definition. All right, we'll wrap up today. Just taking a look at this beautiful, beautiful, one of the nicest, uh, I've been saying this about all my snakes, well, one of the nicest 2022s. This is a Monarch, which is a, which is a T positive line of albino in ball pythons. Probably one of the nicest. You know, I think a lot of people think it is the nicest because it has the most purples in it. Uh, I would say Ultra Melon and Monarch are pretty close to each other, but this is a Hurricane Monarch. So I believe it's the first one produced. I sold one of them, but because like I had two males. This is a Hurricane. You can see the Hurricane swirls right there uh, with the T positive combined. So Hurricane Monarch, first one produced. Beautiful. Uh, I think there's a lot of future potential breeding this guy. I love the Monarch project. I love Hurricane. I would love to produce Super Hurricane Monarchs and a lot more cool stuff down the road. And so stay tuned. This is just the beginning and very happy with uh, this mail. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up today. I want to also uh, remember to give a huge shout out, prayers, love, healing energy out to my good friend, Brian Barczyk, who's fighting a battle for his life. Uh, the guy is the bravest guy I know. And I know, Brian, you're going to beat this uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, and if you guys want to uh, help the cause, you can buy one of his T-shirts. I just bought one of his Reptile Army T-shirts. I really love those. I know there's a, there's a GoFundMe to donate to help with the Reptarium and the, uh, the new aquarium build. So Brian's doing it right. I want to just, once again, send out my love. And guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Uh, we got some cool ball python stuff. Still have a bunch of stuff available. I have to start listing some stuff from the 2022 season because guess what? The 23 stuff is going to be hatching next month. I can't believe it already. It's unbelievable how fast time passes. But I promise I'll get that stuff up ASAP. And uh, for now, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.